Hey guys, Youngblood with you, and today I wanted to throw up a quick video um, on Outfit Night after we winded down. There are some people that wanted to get some uh, flight training in, so uh, we recorded it and put it up, and uh, hopefully you guys can learn from it. Uh, basically, uh, we're trying to build and buff up our air wing a little bit, uh, and this was one of the things that we did. So we kind of talked about key bindings and maneuvers, and some of this stuff is stuff that I've already covered in previous videos, um, but you'll actually see my perspective and what I was talking about along with uh, um, another perspective from uh, The Real Air Do, uh, one of my outfit mates, who I'll put a link to his channel in the description. So uh, take a look if you like, and I will talk to you guys later. Take care. Hey, Youngblood, are you familiar with the throttle toggle? Yeah, I actually replaced my, uh, my, uh, decelerate with that. You think it's worth replacing that? Yes. Sounds good. I didn't know, like, a good place to put that yet. Yeah. What the hell is throttle toggle? No, 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 it's, it's, an analog, it's analog throttle. Um, and basically, as soon as you hit it, you, you come to a stop. Like, you, it decreases your, it kills your momentum much faster than just holding S. Okay. So I'll I'll actually analog throttle. Yeah, I'll actually okay. go ahead and yeah, talk. Yeah, give us. Yeah, we should talk about the yeah right. key right. bindings. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, we'll go through that. All right, is everybody over here that wants to be over here? I'm logging in. What are we doing? Sorry, I've been paying attention. We're on the VR area. We're gonna young lad's gonna teach us how to fly reavers better. Whoa, that is way better. You like that? Thank you, young blood. It's just a throttle uh, analog, right? It's an analog throttle. Oh, yeah, throttle analog. Um, if you actually... Uh, and I'll, I'll get into this in a sec. I just want to get everybody over here so they can change okay. it if they want to. Record this. Maybe it'd be good to put post later. Yeah, yeah I've this. got it recording right now. Well, mine's going up in 1080. What the hell? There's, like, bits of stuff, mm. like, floating around in the sky up there. Well, maybe I'll steal your video and mash them together so I can show dual perspective of mine and yours. Okay, that's fine with me. Fancy pants. Where are we be going? Awesome. We're in VR. Alright. There is strict comms discipline. Think of uh, Youngblood as the worst crabby English teacher you've ever had, and she does not like it to be interrupted. She? Alright, he. Think of me more as the gym <laughs> teacher that will punch you in the face, and then will tell you that if you report it, there's going to be problems. That sounds more about right. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, is everybody here? Yeah, and some people pulled reavers. Just random stuff. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna start out with just key binding, so I'm assuming everybody knows how to get to key bind I'm assuming everybody knows how to get to key binding, so <clears throat> um, if you go over to the aircraft, I'll just kinda run through what mine are. The single biggest change that you really should be making is pulling away. You need to rebind E for uh, exit. Um, right now, if you're flying with mouse and keyboard, you're flying with WASD. Um, and it's way too easy, either if you are hitting W and you accidentally clip the E a little bit, or if you're trying to reach over for the R button to reload, um, you know, that can be a problem as well. So what I personally have for that is I've got my... Um, number pad minus sign for uh, exit vehicle. It's way out of the way. You're never going to hit it unless I guess you're flying with 8456 for some reason, but um, that's the number one thing that you should really do. Now, after that, the next biggest one is the one that we were talking about, the throttle analog. Now, if you guys weren't paying attention uh, before or weren't in yet, the Throttle analog, basically what it does is it automatically kills your momentum. Now, it's not an immediate stop. It's not like an e-brake turn or anything like that, but it's a lot faster than just holding down S right now. So what I did was I actually took S and made that uh, analog throttle because it's going to stop you a lot faster and it's going to make pulling uh, maneuvers much easier. And since I've already rebinded my E key... I had that free, so my exit key, so I then made throttle down E. The problem with the uh, throttle and the analog throttle is when you are trying to land, if you're trying to kill your momentum as well as holding control to drop, the analog throttle is going to keep you hovering above the ground. So you need to make sure that you've still got a throttle down available 
and that's why I still got it as E because it's nice and close because you actually need that key so you can land safely. You can just hold control to drop all the way down but uh, you know if depending on how fast you're descending uh, you're gonna hit the ground pretty hard and probably take damage. Everybody with me so far? Yep. yep. Uh, how about holding down the button versus just tapping it once? Uh, it shouldn't really matter, to be honest with you. <clears throat> I typically hold it down just because I learned to fly with S being the, uh, uh, you know, throttle down before I figured this piece out. Um, and it just seems more fluid to me, but it shouldn't make that big of a difference. It should just kill your momentum right as soon as you hit it. What did you use for exit? Uh, the number pad minus sign. I use semicolon. Yeah, basically just way out of the way. <laughs> anything that you're not going to hit on accident. So, I mean, it could be anything. Just something that you know you're not going to hit. Well, understand if you choose to uninstall the game after accidentally exiting while still doing this. Yeah. Alright, so does that make sense? Uh, do we have any other questions in there? Just a small preference here. I actually changed my E to that analog thing instead, and now E is for e-brake. Yeah, and I mean, anyway. you know, it's whatever it works for you. The reason I chose S was because, um, you know, that's what I was familiar with for killing momentum. So, it, you know, it just kind of made sense. Now, with analog throttle, one thing that's weird is in order to actually start moving forward again sometimes it's a little bit wonky sometimes you kinda need to tap W a couple times again to start moving forward um, it, it's also you'll notice that you know when you start flipping around engaging enemies uh, you need to sometimes hit W again to start moving forward because you're gonna kind of lose that momentum and you're gonna almost tumble out of the air like you're in a stall so just know that that's something you're gonna have to get used to and it, if you're used to flying with uh, just throttle down versus the analog throttle it, it gets really hard at first you got to kind of get used to it and it's not I shouldn't say it's hard it just feels a lot different than it is with uh, the way it currently is um, the two other changes that I would suggest is um, if you've got a mouse that's got a couple thumb buttons um, I would definitely suggest that you bind uh, pitch up and pitch down to your uh, thumb buttons now, you can obviously do it with your mouse currently by pushing up or pushing down, but it's uh, jerky and it's not smooth. Uh, so for me, um, and, my, well, let me put it this way. The best way to probably do it would be your forward thumb button would be to pitch up. Your down, or your back, I guess your rear thumb button would be to pitch uh, down. Uh, pitch down, the best way to think of it is a nose down turn. Now, for me, I'm so used to having my back mouse button being reload that I kept it the same for my uh, ESF. But uh, so for me, I've got my pushing down on my wheel as my pitch down. You know, just play around with it and find something. But it's good to have some, some button binded to those because it's going to make all your maneuvers much smoother and much faster. For those of us who don't have enough mouse buttons, what I do is I have. Q and E set to pitch down and pitch up respectively. Yeah, that's a great tip. All right, so I mean, outside of that, my uh, key bindings are fairly similar. Um, ultimately, you have to it's pick one which is more important: pitch up or pitch down. I can only have one. Key. Uh, I personally use pitch up more. Pitch up is probably more useful in situations, but if you were talking about doing the reverse maneuver, pitch down is more important. Indeed. So I guess for the purpose of this lesson, I would bind to pitch down. Wait, what are we doing? We're doing some uh, flight training on the uh, uh, virtual reality. Oh. Okay, so if we want to talk about what vehicle to pull and like how we want to start these out, probably the easiest setup for right now would be to uh, have a reaver. That, uh, and again, for this, utility and defense aren't going to matter. Um, I would go ahead and pick Hover 3. It's going to make you much more stable. The vertical thrust makes all of this a lot easier. Um, so that's what I would suggest. And then, just for the purpose of this, get uh, external afterburner fuel tanks. Um, you know, it's probably the best dogfighting class right now anyways. But for pulling these types of maneuvers, having that extra afterburner is beneficial. So I guess let's... Uh, 
let's go ahead and uh, pull some reavers, and we'll uh, I'll go demonstrate what we're t working on. Yeah, I gotta rebound my key. That's fine. Apparently, I gotta update, so I won't be on for a little bit. That's fine. Mm. All right, let's go. Let's go to the uh, southeast portion of the map, so we're away from anybody that's over there. Isn't that where the tower's at? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. people like to troll a lull in here. Real Heard that's quick, good for prex. That having played on the test server, do you see anything replacing, like afterburner as the go-to for dog sliding, dog uh, fighting? I uh, probably not. I mean, coyotes might be pretty helpful. Um, yeah, it's hard to say. Oh, hold on one sec. I gotta... I, the, the initial release of the new weapons, they were really overpowered, especially the Gatling guns, but then when they got nerfed, they're just about in line with the weapons we already have right now, so it's like having a second nose gun, almost. And we don't really need that. It's pretty good at long range. Like, it's 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 since it spreads out more, it's easier to hit things. And I could always run with an air hammer and a an rotary. Yeah, that's actually yeah, a really good idea. That's not bad. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think it's better to use a joystick? What do you think it's better to use walls than uh... Mouse, mouse, joysticks, mouse joysticks are broken. Mouse ahoy. Flexors, isn't hm. Mine's better, but, you know. Lucky duck. I want him. I'm doing this with the mouse. I'm gonna try. For some there. reason, my pitch up and pitch down keys aren't working on my mouse. I put Youngblood as lead of Charlie Squad, so he's the star. Okay. Um. I want, to, I want you guys, I'm going to be flying right over the tower so you guys can all see me. Uh, what I'm doing in just a second is just a pitch down turn. And you'll notice how you can almost fly backwards without even using the afterburner. It's essentially just rotating 90 degrees, using pitch down, and uh, using the space button. And you'll be able to see how I kind of circle around. And if you pitch down... I'm sorry, if you tip your nose down using the yaw a little bit, you'll be able to see how I spin around a little bit more. So let me kill my momentum again. Alright, I'm not with you, wait a minute. You can also look at me, I'm doing it too. Yeah, vinyl. I'm just watching you pirouette over there. Now. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the big benefit to the uh, pitch down versus the pitch up turn, is that when you're pitching down, um, you're able to keep your gun on target a little bit better. You can seem to get ahead of the target, you know, so you can lead them while you're in those tight spins. When you're in the pitch up turn, um, you're basically just following the target, while the pitch down almost gets you ahead of the target. So you can see, I'm, I'm just in a pretty tight turn right now, and part of it has to do with the angle that you're actually All choosing. Right, stop, stop one second. Where yeah. are you? <laughs> the southeast corner. Yeah, he's up high. You're right and you're going back. Tower, up back. Put a waypoint that. down. Guys, if you land and look up, you can see a lot more. Oh my god, that's so cool. I, I love having the pitch buttons. Like, oops. Yeah. Tune leader. <laughs> Flex, you see where we're at? Yeah, you got a big star over you now. I made you a platoon later. Oh, okay. There, I'll uh, put a beacon down. Alright, so. Point. So, again, and we'll spread out and try this in a sec, but basically what we're doing is I want you guys just to practice rolling 90 degrees using your pitch down key and using the uh, space bar. And you should be able to spin in a very tight circle. Whoa. Yep. <laughs> Hover frame makes us That's really, fucking really cool. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> Hit afterburners while you do it. <laughs> yeah, we'll add the afterburners in in a sec. I think that's what I was doing. 
don't have That's space for her. Get up high to do this. No, oh, well, I'm, I'm dying. Yeah, it's better to practice this up high. When you get really good at it, you can almost uh, practice, you know, flying around trees. Yeah, I was doing that earlier, actually. For some reason, I always go down when I try it. Working, that was actually pretty good. I mean, you were able to kind of get that oblong circle, which is helpful. All right, so I'm going to let you guys just practice that for just a couple more, you know, about 30 seconds. So, pitch down. This is making me dizzy. Just 90 degrees and then pitch down and then what? Uh, hold space. And then just spin into a tight circle. It might even be better to pitch like, and it pr it's probably better to pitch like 80 degrees. That lets you uh, kind of control it a little bit better and stay on an even plane. The less your pitch, the bigger the circle. Yep. So if you use space, you're saying is up up thrust, right? Yeah. Yes. And since you're circling around, um, w you know, with your thrusters down, it's kind of pushing you in a tighter circle. All right. Okay. Now, like Vinyl mentioned, um, you know, kind of regroup. I'm going to do this right over the uh, waypoint. Um, the next thing we're going to work on is actually adding afterburner to this. Uh, and this is kind of the beginning stages of the uh, reverse turn. Because what the afterburner is actually going to do is it's going to kick you out of that tight spin. So, uh, you see right now this is just a normal pitch down turn, but the second I hit afterburners, you see how I kind of kick out of it and I'm flying backwards? So I'm turning, I'm turning, the thrusters are down, and you hit the afterburners. That's the key with this, is the thrusters actually have to push down. Now, what that entails is if you have pitched down, uh, I'm sorry, if you've got analog thrusters, it happens a little bit quicker. If you don't, just use your uh, throttle down. Uh, and then as soon as your thrusters point down, that's the key. That's when you can start using the uh, afterburner to kind of spin yourself around a little bit more aggressively. Now, if you hit the so, after if you hit the afterburners before that, you're not going to be able to kick yourself out of that turn and get that you know that rearward momentum. All right, go over the procedure again, please. Sure. So it's going to be the same thing that we were just doing. So rolling about you know 80 degrees, pitching down. And then once you notice your thrusters are pointing down, hit the afterburner for a second. Notice how you get kicked back. You'll notice you drift backwards for a second. Well, you have to be coming to a stop when you're doing yes. this, right? Yes, you have to be... Jesus. Yeah. Flex that last one is pretty good. How, what? My key bindings are like gone. Yeah, they're different in VR. Oh, well, no, they shouldn't be different in VR. Yeah. Wow, look at, look at, uh, look at STL just flipping around like no one cares. No one does care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, why does my reaver keep like bouncing off the pad? Um, it's because you've got analog throttle on. You gotta remember. You, I said you gotta use the. Uh, that's why I wanted you to rebind uh, throttle down. Um, otherwise, you can just hold control and you should be able to land it. Mm -hmm. Analog throttle by itself won't let you just land. It makes you kind of hover there. One workaround is to just tap throttle up. Then you'll go from constantly throttling down to just a little bit of throttle up, and then use control to. Okay. Down. Yeah. So. When you're flying straight, somebody's on your tail. You want to slow down, pitch, and throw an afterburn. Right. So, let me. Uh, I guess let me uh, try and find a way to demonstrate. I'm gonna go towards the west and come back towards Oof. the tower. 
and I'll kind of simulate like I've got somebody on my tail. I'll follow you. I crashed. Late flex, you crashed? Yeah. We'll wait for you to get back. Apparently it's possible to be flipped upside down and climb. Yes. Yep. Thank you, Mouse, for stop being... We're meeting to waypoint? Yep. Yep, everybody get back to the waypoint. You fly in third person mostly? Oh yeah. Unless, unless, I'm, he shoots unless I'm shooting, I'm in third person. I actually know people who figure out a way like they always know where they aim and so they can just shoot in third person also. Okay, guys, don't don't come to me, go to the waypoint because vinyl's gonna simulate somebody chasing me. I'm working, it's called putting a piece of tape in the middle of your screen. We're just That's what I was Sharpie thinking and leaving too. a dot or something. Oh fuck sharpieing my screen. Yeah, really. I have a transparency that I use. I'll just have a little piece of a postage stamp I put there. Alright, Vinyl, you ready? Yep. Alright, here we come. Good. I'm gonna wait till I get just a hair closer. <laughs> Were you guys able to see that? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Dem dem How much on average are you demoralizing? Is what that is. <laughs> That's what it is. Out. <laughs> There's no way I could duplicate that. Well, it's, it's called making people like me who are horrible flyers feel ashamed of themselves. Well, and that's uh, why you... that's why we're doing this. I'm sorry, Flux. What were you saying? It's all right. Here, I mean, let's let's do this. I mean, maybe we all just go to like form up a line and head towards the tower, and then you can all just try and replicate it as we go. You should live stream while you're doing this. Easy to everyone to see exactly what you do then. I'm uh, I'm recording it right now. And I got this too. I'm I'm being your camera guy. Uh, SEL. Sweet. So, if you guys want to just kind of do the same thing I'm doing, we're again, what we're doing is we're going to fly towards the tower. When you get to the tower, uh, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to, once you're approaching the tower, that's when you're going to simulate somebody shooting you from behind. So you're going to rotate. And on the reverse maneuver, it's actually best to try and rotate about 120 degrees or so. Um, after you rotate, and actually I, while I'm rotating, I'm holding pitch down. Or for me, the analog throttle. Um, so you're, as you're turning, you're pitch or you're holding analog throttle or throttle down. Then you're gonna pitch down, and as soon as you notice your thrusters are pointing down, you hold the uh, afterburner, but continue to pitch down, and it's gonna kick you out of that spin a little bit wider. So, here we go. All right. I rebounded my pitch up and pitch down to my mouse mouse scroll, but it's not working. I flubbed it. That's right. Just keep trying it. And that was pretty good, just a little too much angle. <laughs> I was just about to say, I was like, damn, dude, that was good. And then I realized it was vinyl. <laughs> <laughs> I was taking off from the landing yeah. pad. Yeah, working. That was pretty good. Just, did, I don't think you hit the afterburner uh, soon enough, but yeah. What I'm seeing though is a lot of people that are getting some backwards momentum. So while it may not be smooth right now, you're at least kicking your vehicle back, which is important. You can kind of work on the angle and actually getting that in a circle, you know, later on.
Now, one of the best ways to just practice this, and it's really simple, is just to uh, practice spinning in a circle and continuously tapping your afterburner. And notice as your circle keeps getting a little bit wider and wider and wider. You're doing pitch down, right? Yep. Was that you just that just clipped me on the wing? Yeah. Boom. In reverse. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, it's fine. That make for an interesting dual perspective. Yeah, that will. <laughs> So this is one just to practice. Um, you know, when we talk about flying in third person, it's incredibly useful. Okay, who's number nine Bravo? That is Nick Danger. Nick Danger, nice job, man. That was a good one. Yeah, when we talk about flying in third person, it's incredibly useful. Like I said, I'm only in first person if I'm actually going to be shooting somebody. So it's always helpful to kind of just come around like a spire and just see how close you can actually get without hitting anything. You know, utilize your pitch down, utilize pitch up. Just see how close you can get. Just kind of hover around, try and fit through tiny spaces. Um, you'll be surprised how maneuverable you can get in third person without actually even seeing your cockpit. Now, that's nothing we need to really practice right now, just because that's something that you can do on your own time. But um, that's one of the best ways to actually learn uh, you know, flying in the third person. Somebody crash into me in the mountain? Maybe. Might have been me. Now, there's a couple more maneuvers we can talk about real quick. Um, you know, that are helpful. One, uh, the kind of the, the, I guess, sister maneuver to the uh, pitch down turn and the reverse maneuver is what I call the pitch up turn. Um, it's kind of what you would expect is a very natural maneuver to follow an enemy. It's almost more of the classic dog fighting maneuver. Uh, and that's essentially just going to be the same thing. You rotate 90 degrees, you hold pitch up or drag your mouse up, and that's how you're going to tightly follow in a circle. Now the key to all of these maneuvers is killing your momentum. When your momentum is killed, you're able to use your thrusters to spin around a little bit faster. Um, when you when you maintain your forward momentum, you've got a much wider circle, and it doesn't yield you real great results. So if you want to try spinning in a tight circle, it's the same deal. Um, rotate 90 degrees while uh, killing your momentum, and you're pitching up instead of down. Easy to get too low doing that. It's all about the uh, how much you're yawing your craft. You know, if you're about 90 degrees, you're going to be fine. If you go about 95, you're going to start losing altitude pretty quick. It's also easier to stay on the same plane if you're using a uh, you know a mouse button or a key binded to the same thing. Now, if you're only going to master a pitch up or a pitch down, definitely master the pitch down. This pitch up feels very unnatural. Yes. I never use it. Which is funny because it's probably, you know, on Earth, <laughs> you know, that's the, the maneuver. I mean, you can't really do a pitch down too well on any aircraft today, so. So wait, to get uh, backward momentum, you actually have to point your nose up while you're uh, reverse thrusting or whatever. Uh, not necessarily. That's what I'm finding. You, you'll be able to... Do you mean to... using pitch down? Yeah, I'm mastering pitch down or whatever. Yeah, pitch down. That one is really good when reverse thrusting. Yeah. Um, and then I'll go ahead and show you guys one other maneuver, and this is uh, probably my favorite for like if I pass in it, like if an enemy, fl if I'm flying high and an enemy flies below me, um, I believe this one's called the Emmelman, but it's basically a forward somersault. Now with this one. You're essentially, you're flying forward and you need to turn around quickly. Well, this is probably about the quickest way to turn around. Now, the problem is, is you don't get your guns on target as quickly as you would with a uh, reverse maneuver. So this is good for when an enemy doesn't know you're there. Basically, what you're going to do with this one, and it's very simple, is you're going to kill your momentum like, you, like we've been talking about, and you're going to hold pitch down. Now, with this, it's beneficial to kind of roll while you're doing it. 
Um, and if you guys want to watch over by the tower, I'll kind of demonstrate it for you real quick. You can actually get turned around and facing your target within uh, with, uh, under two seconds. It's hands down the fastest way to turn around. Now again, your guns aren't on target, which is why if you're being engaged, the reverse maneuver is better. But if you, you have a target that's oblivious to you, almost just kind of pulling like a, a 45 degree angle somersault is really helpful. So you go completely inverted, pitch up. And cut momentum at the same time. Uh, you can do that. That's kind of overcomplicating it, though. Basically, what you would do is you're flying. You know, you can do just somersaults. So, like, if you've got forward momentum and you just hold pitch down, you'll notice that you're doing somersaults, right? And an extra one. Right. So, I mean, you can spin in circles like that if you want to. Now, the fastest way to do that is when you kill your momentum kind of turn like I don't know about 45 degrees and you'll notice that you get through that turn a lot faster so it's just keeping your aircraft level just like you're flying across the map but then you actually just kill your momentum and pitch down and you'll notice that you kind of turn around and you're on target really quickly probably the best way that I practiced this one was I set two waypoints you know I set a personal waypoint and I had another target like this tower and I would fly back and forth between the two, just practicing doing downward somersaults. Uh, oh, I need okay. to see you do it again. Sure. Just watch over by the tower. Wait a minute, I'm not in position. I think I just did it without All right. drawing. Okay. I'm sorry if this Where are you cutting thrust? Is it that sensitivity? Did you say why am I or how am I? Are you what cutting like Yes. What do you recommend? All you... all of these maneuvers you want to cut your thrust. Yeah, you might want to talk about mouse sensitivity. That's totally up to preference. I mean, I'll share with you guys what I've currently got. Um, but where I'm at right now is purely just based on my own preference. And it does, I guess, depend on your mouse. Yeah, like I think, DPI I think my, well. I think the, because I've got a uh, three different DPI mouse settings. I, pl I typically play on my uh, second one, and with that, I think that's 800 DPI. Yeah, that's now, about where I have it. Now, as far yeah. as my mouse sensitivity, I'm at about a .32 in the game. And then with my flight vehicle sensitivity, I'm about at a .48. <laughs> so some, some people probably play with that close to a 1. Other people probably have their DPI set closer to 1600 because they like small movements. I prefer it a little bit slower. Uh, just because it allows me to get on target and get land more shots. It's more controlled. Cool. Yeah, personally, I use 1800 DPI and then the default uh, mouse sensitivity. I've got my, mouth, my flying sensitivity all the way up. I don't know how to figure my DPI, so I couldn't tell you. Uh, it's, if you have like a uh, gaming mouse, it'll be on the bottom, usually. Like, if they have like switches. Like, mine goes from 400 to 3,600. I have my Razor mouse. It has two buttons right here next to the mouse wheel that change it. Yep. I've got a Logitech G300. It's a pretty, pretty decent mouse for me, to be honest. It's a game mouse. So, I don't know. I mean, are there... Yeah, more questions you guys had? I mean, it's hard to just to think of random topics off the top of my head. Ground attack techniques. More about maneuverability. Uh, uh, over upside down. 
Well, hovering upside down is just a trick. I mean, it doesn't really do you much good. Not, not practically useful, but what you do is you move yourself to be upside down, and then you press control. Yep. The, the way the thrusters work is that the uh, what's normally your upward thruster is actually just pointing down relative to your aircraft. So if you flip upside down and you press spacebar, you'll launch yourself down really fast. And then conversely, when you land and you press control, you go upside down and it'll push you up. Yep. There, there don't appear to be any thrusters on the top of your ship, but they're there. Yeah. The magic. Um. Nanites. As, as far as yeah, nanites. nanites. Uh, as far as ground attack techniques, um, yeah, I mean, there's just a couple notes I guess that we, everybody should just take note of. Um, you know, if you're attacking a tank of any sort, the rear is always the best place to hit. You know, just like you're shooting rocket launchers. So if you can get behind a uh, mag rider or a uh, uh, prowler, lightning, doesn't matter. Um, the rear is the weakest point. So if you're using rocket pods, you know, if you land every shot in the rear of a tank with your rocket pods, you'll pretty much end up with the kill. Um, outside of... I'm sorry, what? I, f I find the yaw is useful to get on target. Yep, definitely. Which doesn't come into play in dogfighting much. No, it doesn't. And that's that's going to be kind of the key when you're coming in on target the yaw is what's going to land your uh, actually kind of land your accuracy into the right place okay if we're good to move on to dog fighting if someone engages you you do the reverse maneuver now you're both facing each other what do you do Does it just become a contest of who can aim better um, the best thing to do and the thing you need to be prepared for is to continue circling your target while you're uh, shooting. So you want to kind of just tap your thrusters while you're aiming. So, um, Vinyl, where are you at? Why don't you come back over to the, uh, why don't you come back over to the uh, tower roughly and uh, All right. we'll kind of simulate a uh, circling dogfight. Why don't you just follow me into the, follow me into the tower again. Alright, one more second. Uh, let me uh, swap aircraft. I was using rocket pods. Cool. Yeah, if you guys want to watch over by the tower here in a sec, Vinyl and I are going to kind of demonstrate what a what a good dogfight will look like. Just because if you're fighting a good pilot, he's going to pull the same maneuvers that you're going to see us using. You want to go head to head, or you want to start with one of us behind each other? Why don't you start behind me? I'll circle on you, and then we'll spin. All right. It's like a ballet in the sky. Pretty much. It, yeah, I like to equate it to break dancing. <laughs> more, much more manly. All right, All right I'm behind you. All right. If you're fighting the VS, it's a ballet. All right, I'm about to turn. You notice how neither one of us is chasing each other, we're trying to keep our guns on target. I lost you in all the reavers. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. That's fine, but that's the general idea, is you want to make sure that you're continuing to spin while keeping your gun on the target. Basically, it's a step up from just being a hovering turret and fighting like people used to do in beta. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it, the key is you don't want to just hold your afterburner the entire time. And this is why the fuel tanks are so beneficial when you're in dogfights, because you're able to kind of burst your afterburner a lot more than if you've, you know, just either one, waste it and burn the whole way through it, in which case you're kind of effed because you can't really circle without that unless you just continue to pitch down, uh, in which case they're going to fly circles around you. So tapping your afterburner is way more beneficial. Just tap it in. Just tap it in. Tap it, tap it, tap it. <laughs> more or less. Now, the reverse maneuver is not only just beneficial for uh, engaging, you know, in dogfights. You know, using the reverse maneuver when you're attacking ground targets lets you get more shots on quicker. So if you guys want to come over to where we've got this... Uh, uh, friendly reaver on the ground. Don't blow it up because I'm going to use it for demonstration purposes. Uh, 
I just moved the platoon waypoint to it. Now, I'm going to show you what a, a newer pilot would typically do in order to keep getting fire on the target, so the first example is going to be a bad example. Yes, I'm intentionally missing. You see how I'm kind of all over the place. I keep attacking them from different angles. It's hard to get back on target. Here's where the reverse maneuver comes back into play again. Turned around a lot quicker and I'm ready again. So, let me show that again. Starting my fire, rotate, kill momentum, hit the afterburner, and I'm right over him. Doing my damage, need to move around, pitch down, afterburn, I'm still on top of him. So it's really not just limited to dogfighting. It's hands down simply the most useful maneuver out there, and it's the hands down the thing that separates pilots of high skill and low skill. Head seal. Hmm. Question, what happens when they nerf the shit out of this maneuver? It hasn't been confirmed they're doing it yet, so I'm hoping they don't. I think you're gonna just have to start into it, be my guess. I was hoping the surgery for afterburner tanks would be an upgrade. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think uh, it could use some, I guess, it is. logic it's behind it. the best air to dog oh. option. I'll never get rid of my air-to-air -air missile. I, I just find afterburner so much more useful, but especially since the buffs to the uh, nose guns. Alright, boys. That was very good, thank you. I think we can call yep. that a night. Sure thing. <laughs>